Hello friends, this is our 8th and the last lecture on an essay on dramatic poesy. So we have gone through, we have done some good work. We saw introduction, overview, Clytis view, view of Clytis praising the ancients, Lysidius criticizing the English and then praising the uh, French. And we have Eugenius praising the moderns and the Neander concluding. Or you can say moderation. Now, Critis has something else, something to say about the rhyming and versing. Two reasons he objects. First reason is that it is not natural, Critis. That's the opinion of Critis. Not natural. Especially it is not natural for repartis. Reparti. That is uh, questions and answers, no, sudden answers, no, sudden answers. That is not what he says. It is nobody speaks in verse in our day-to-day -day life. Listen. The second point is that, that uh, sudden thoughts cannot be expressed in verse. Sudden thoughts. Sudden thoughts. It's difficult to express in verse and rhyme, using verse and rhyme. Because when it's sudden, an idea comes to your mind. Then you have to sit and see. Oh, what are the words to be used? How to put these words in order? What is the, the first line rhymes in take? And so the next one should take in seek a uh, rhyme like that. It says that is practically not possible. Sudden words is not possible. And then a third point he says, for epic is alright. For epic, rhyme is proper. But not for tragedy. Not for tragedy. Now, these are three objections raised by Critis. Is it that? A most unnatural verse, particularly, he says in Ripati. To this, there's a beautiful line, a Ripati, for example, by Romeo and Juliet. See, Juliet says like this, you know, uh, Saints do not move, though grand or prayers say. Saints do not, Saints do not move, though Grant of prayer's sake. That is, Juliet says. Then the repartee comes by Romeo. Romeo says, that is, uh, Romeo says that, then move not. Why? My prayer's uh, effect I take. Then move not. Then move not. While my prayers affect, I take. So you can see this now. Say so you can take rhyme. What's wrong with that? It's perfectly all right. So in the hands of a great writer like, uh, like uh, Shakespeare, these rules will have no uh, sense in, in the way we can see. We saw the unities of time and place. No? Shakespeare doesn't bother about it. See? And later on, you can see that uh, Dr. Johnson also supports Shakespeare. Because uh, Dr. Johnson says, you go to you go to a film, sorry, a drama, thinking that it is an imaginative or a creative one. So then why can't he say, now first, uh, first scene in Rome, you can imagine second Rome in Alexandria, or say a third, third, third scene in, uh, in London. Why can't you imagine like that? Anyhow, you know, this is not true. This is not the factual things. So, imagination. In that case, you can imagine like that. So, he supports, Dr. Johnson supports uh, Shakespeare later. Like we will see when Dr. Johnson uh, prefers to Shakespeare, when he deals with the uh, professor and his criticism, we will see more about that. Because the whole thing is imagination, isn't it? So, three points here. Not natural, especially in Viparthi, it is not at all possible, he says. But we have already proved that it is possible. That is, a sudden thoughts cannot be expressed, and in epic it is proper. I hope you have taken down these points, three points raised by Critis. Now the answer comes. Or, see, some kind of moderation, he says. Question, uh, moderation number one. If you can, if prime is proper for epic, it should be proper for tragedy also. Why? Because both are imitations of imitation of nature. One is in narration, narrate, one is in the form of narration, and the other is in the form of uh, action. That's all. So, if 
pick you agree, and why can't you agree and try the also, or a play, or a drama, it has to be a man. Then answering the second question, sudden thoughts. Sudden thoughts, he says, you can, with, without any difficulty, you can express it. So the, you can express in words, sudden thoughts. So as we have already seen that, expressing in words, Rome, so Julie then Romeo. This, this is maybe sudden thought, and reply also. So it can be, it is accepted, he says. And it makes things beautiful also. See that sudden thoughts can be. But don't think that verse is the effect of sudden. Verse is not, it is uh, the effect of sudden thought. That we can say. But verse is not the effect of sudden thought. The other way around. Okay. So sudden thoughts can be exposed. Now third is that, the third point is that uh, such thoughts are, are from higher characters. Such thoughts are higher thoughts and higher characters. Listen. Now, is it that you in higher characters, so what happens is, it comes automatically to them. Uh, when you find in tragedy, characters are the heroes, for example, they are above nature, not average people. They are kings and queens and learned people and so on. So, sudden thoughts come to their mind uh, and the thoughts that the uh, thoughts issuing from their brains, this is higher than the ordinary. So, there also it's not a problem. Characters are higher, the thoughts are higher. Therefore, they can easily express these things in words. Understand? And the fourth point is, 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 I hope you are following me. You see, when a play to be, a play to be like nature should be said above nature. A play to be nature, to be like nature, set above nature. Above nature. And then he gives an example, he says, see, a strategy for example. Suppose you are a, you are, strategy, you are, a, a, you are a making a statue. Statues placed uh, in a higher, higher place. It has to be above normal place now. Then the statues which are placed on high, they have to be uh, higher than life. Statues placed uh, above, uh, on high, placed on high. And uh, statues which are placed on high, they have to be, uh, they have to be made higher than life. You just think of the statue of unity. It's 597 feet high. Understand? Why? Because a person standing on the ground, when you look at it, he should feel that it is 6 feet also. Otherwise, if you are, if, suppose you are keeping a 6 feet statue there, above, high above there, then you won't be able to see even that. And it will be something like a dot. So, is it that uh, if you want place has to be set above nature, if you want them to look like nature. Just as that. Or another example in Florence, if you go to Italy, you will find in Florence, there's the statue of David. It is 17 feet. 17, 1, 7. But since it is set above, in a, in a higher pedestal, if you stand here and look at it, you will feel, ah, it's only uh, 5.9 or 6 or 6.1 or something like that. So it's like that. See, if you ordinary things, ordinary characters, ordinary conversation, dialogue and so on, then uh, you are using uh, slang and the, uh, uh, other things like that, it looks very ordinary. So it has to be at a higher plane. Characters higher plane, their thoughts higher plane. The language they use should be higher play. Just the statues that we are given. I think you understand. And repartis, about repartis. Already we have seen repartis. Repartis says, when you uh, use it, so you use rhyme, it, it makes all the more sweet and beautiful. Just as, as we have seen now. Saints do not move the grand Grand for prayer sake. Prayer sake. I take. So we partition. And he says, 
it became it is it becomes sweet the sound sweet sense sweet appearance sweet and he converts it like this it is like a honey bees sometimes they bury themselves in honey so the part is in in uh, rhyme and rhyme and verse it is like sweet as honey he says the language is honey the language becomes honey just as uh, honey bees bury the, their head the, in their honey so we also do that is you enjoy that is something understand yeah then another thing and sixth point is uh, seven reparty honey honey bees you can say honey bees like honey bees then seventh point is is supporting supporting way is it that the imagination runs sometimes it runs wild there's no limiting but if you use words sometimes the luxuriant imagination can be given a shape it is like it is like he says by building a compound wall for your house suppose you build a compound wall for your house then there is some structure isn't it without a compound wall also you can have your house but when there is a compound wall there is some structure some limit so the luxurious fancy and imagination of a poet can be given shape and order and discipline by putting them in verse and rhyme what do you think about that that's a bit of argument Isn't it? That's a very beautiful one. See, otherwise what happens? Imagination is lawless. Imagination is wild. But when you can say, for example, you, you can keep your the rule and line can keep your building compact. Rule and line. Imagine this classroom, which has uh, which does not have four walls and a ceiling. How it how it, how will it look like? It's like the rhyming and versing is exactly like. That. understand yeah there it is and then he says in couplets so, so discipline you can say discipline discipline it disciplines imagination wild imagine fancy of the poet listen and now we have got the eighth point is that the, it is in couplets couplets rhyming comes automatically our next uh, next uh, I like this on Alexander Pope Alexander Pope's and essay on poetry so you will find that there are couplets all rhyming to every human for give is divine like the little day little knowledge is a dangerous thing things like that is so you'll find all rhyming couplets you find in couplets is quite or quite it naturally says it comes naturally But the words are already arranged, and therefore, what happens? It can be rhyming is uh, understand. Then it says, you, you. Uh, there is uh, a ninth point. Of course, it is also an answer to crisis. In rhyming and versing, if you, the poet is bound to commit mistake and faults, he says. But he says, if a poet commits mistake and faults in in rhyming and versing. then without rhyming and verse he will commit more mistakes so there is a liability so the, so the ah, sorry liable that the poet is liable to make mistakes poet is liable liable to make more mistakes more mistakes that is the, the poet is liable to make more mistakes see and then we have got he says Shakespeare wrote like uh, tens tens of uh, tens and as uh, uh, maybe forty up to forty not tens no up to forty lines rhyming you will find. See two in Hamlet you can see no in Hamlet you find time is out of joint says says what curse of spite and then he says that that. that ever i was born to put it right time is out of joint to a christian right that i was ever born to put it 
right. So spite and right. Beautiful rhyming. Many lines, many passages like this. In in other love, you find such uh, such lines. See that? So these are things are familiar to you, and that's therefore I do not want to uh, I do not want to bo burden you with all these quotations. Let's see. Understand? So I have already quoted from uh, Hamlet. You will find you can you you are you are already reading Hamlet now, so you can easily find that out. And Romeo and Juliet and other law and so on. You will find the rhyming. Ben Johnson uses 30, 40 lines continuous, rhyming and versing. Without that also he writes. Ovid uh, is he is a famous for a luxurian fancy and rhyming altogether. Understand? So these things are there. It's nothing to and uh, what do you hear? Nothing strange about it. Or as Christ says that improper about it. Nothing improper about it. So we have got nine uh, reasons here. Uh, three objections made by Christ. You remember one? It is improper. It is unnatural. Especially it is unnatural for the parties. We have answered like this with the quoting from Romeo and Juliet. And then you saw the second is he said. That his second objection is that what does he say? What does he say? Is there is that the sudden thoughts cannot be expressed. Sudden thoughts cannot be expressed. And then you, we also saw that this is it is uh, in daily life we don't use it. No, so it is uh, it is proper for a peak but not for tragedy. See that? And uh, a fourth objection, if you want, you can add according to Kaitisis that the that. Uh, poets make mistakes when they use rhyme and the uh, verse. So four, you can say four. He raises four objections. One, it is improper, and especially in in, in uh, repartis. The second one is sudden thoughts. So it's sudden thoughts, and then he says the third one is uh, it is. Uh, 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 sudden thoughts cannot be other. Third is uh, epic is okay, but not to her tragedy. And fourth is poets may make mistakes always when using rhyme and uh, rhyme and verse. To this, there are the nine points. A nine point answer defense. First, if it is proper for epic, this for tragedy also should be proper because. Both are imitations. One is narration, and the other is in the form of narration, and the other is action. Sudden thought is this. Sudden thought can be as per se. Anybody can do it. Like a, the characters in, uh, in in place of Shakespeare, and also Ben Jonson and Fletcher, and uh, and uh, therefore it is not a difficult thing. But uh, by just by by using words, you cannot produce sudden thought. That is what is it. Then third is that the characters are higher. Imitation of an action that is serious. The characters are serious. What they speak that is serious. Tragedy is an imitation of action that is serious, complete. That's the thing. So serious. The actors are serious. What they speak is serious. So they should speak a different language, a different style, not ordinary people. Therefore, it's quite natural. This is. Then he says the characters are of higher nature. And ah, the, the the play to be an imitation of nature, it should be set above it. Just a statue placed above, are uh, the, the, they are higher than uh, life size. Like the statue of unity, very clear to you. And uh, a David statue you might not have seen, but uh, I also have not seen, but uh, I know about it. So you can see, the, you can browse the net and see. Okay, and then we have got repartis. The is like, it's like a uh, sweet. It makes language sweet. It's like uh, you bury yourself in that. You feel like uh, just uh, getting uh, buried in that. Like honeybees sometimes bury themselves in their honey, their own honey. So the language becomes sweet. We have seen Romeo and Juliet, uh, Juliet and Romeo uh, talking you now. See, uh, then for sake I take. So that is that. And uh, then the discipline. So, uh, imagination is wild and the fancy is uh, 
Uh, you cannot control it, fancy. So, when you have lines, when you go to versing and rhyming, you can control it. Like the, the, the boundaries of a building or the uh, compound walls of uh, your house, very simple. And now you look at your compound walls, you can remember this point, that it limits, there is some discipline in that. Understand? You can do that. And then, uh, next is the couplet. Couplet is automatic. Because the words are arranged properly, so the rhyme will automatically fall. That's what it says there. And poet is liable to make mistakes. Already we have seen that is poem raised by Christ. And we said, if the poet makes mistakes by versing and rhyming, he will make more mistakes by not using a verse and the rhyme. So these are the nine poems I suppose you have taken this down. Now what I mean is the Bharti has come. Bharti has returned. And now it is, it has reached the Somerset um, stairs. That is the place they are, they are, they are to alight. Somerset stairs. And still, uh, Eugene, sorry, uh, Neander was speaking. Then Eugene is once, twice, thrice told him, stop, it is time, it's the evening, it is time for the pass. It's not that. Because he has immersed in them. Like honeybees are buried, uh, honeybees bury their head themselves in honey. Neander was, Neander buried himself in this act of uh, moderation. Understand? And then there is, a, there is a very beautiful uh, uh, line, I may say a sentence, kind of conclusion. He said, we stood, we spent, we spent, the company was all, the, the company was sorry that they had to depart. But they are so much interested in this. Then they said, uh, we stood a while looking back. So means, why when we look back, you remember Sarandala looking back at Dushyadana. Why? Because she was so much immersed or interested in him. That's the reason. So when you look back, say suppose, suppose uh, you say goodbye to me at the end of the year, and after you were social, you say, sir, bye, have a nice name, etc. Then I, I take two or three steps, then I look back. That means, what does that mean? Because my love for the students is so great. See that, I have, I have got that much love for you. That's why I will look back like that. Then he says, they, they stood a while looking back on the, on the water, upon which the moon beams played. They, they stood a while looking back on the water. Like this, looking back on the world, on which, on which the moonbeams played, and and appear appear like a flowing quick silver. The water appeared like a flowing quick silver. The moonbeams played on the water. The water appeared like quick silver, quick quick silver. Thus, the other uh, essay comes to an end. I hope you have followed me. You have enjoyed me, enjoyed my class. So this is different from Simon. This is all right. But I uh, have one more point to, to notice that uh, towards say halfway through his life, Dryden left this rhyme, although he was very uh, vehemently supporting. And uh, supporting this uh, use of rhyme and verse, say, uh, after Sunday, he said, Goodbye to Mistress Rhyme. That's the word. Goodbye to Mistress Rhyme. He bid goodbye to Mistress Rhyme. That's, uh, that's what it is written. Whether it is, it must be correct also. Yes. It must be right. Okay. So, with that, we come to the end of this. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed this class. And if you have got any doubts or any clarifications required, definitely. You can uh, contact me and uh, remember that one, one more point I would like to tell you is that, uh, that this is not a substitute for the essay. Original essay should be read by you. Only then you will be able to enjoy this. If you have enjoyed my class, it is a duplicate enjoyment. It is not an original enjoyment. So you must read the original. Hoping that you will do it. And uh, one of the most brilliant pieces of English prose in the 18th century. And therefore, you must read it. See that? 
and uh, I hope that you will do it. And along with that, you will subscribe to my channel also. So thank you very much for listening. Have a nice time. Enjoy yourself. Bye.